of YouTube land and friends and non-friends and bashers and winners and losers. I want to talk to you a little bit right now about uh, nutrition and activity that has killed boxing and nobody's talking about. It just nobody's there's been killed sports in general and nobody's talking about uh, killed the toughness killed the endurance in sport today especially in boxing and one talk to you about yesteryear versus today to really simplify it and it's beyond my belief. I'm sure people are talking about it, but I haven't seen anyone talking about these particulars here. Uh, kids back in the day, uh, my day included, obviously, uh, we didn't have computers. We weren't. Uh, we had some games in my day. I'm not going to explain to you the hook to the TV, and uh, but something remarkable went on in my day we'd sit and play those when we didn't have anything to do and we'd be out running around uh i'd be and these things happen from time immemorial up to my generation and a generation after me it happened for them too uh you know we we would read more uh, books, books, real books. Uh, we worked during the summer. Most of us would be fighting to mow another fellow's yard. Uh, there'd be a competition going on, a little bit of bidding wars in the neighborhood and adjacent neighborhoods. So we were doing stuff. Uh, a lot of us had paper routes and, uh, like you see in the movies today, but probably don't see in your neighborhood. Boy would either be walking around the neighborhood or on a bicycle slinging papers out. Uh, and uh, so, and when things like that weren't happening, uh, we were out playing. I mean, we would literally go into the woods, uh, chop a tree down and build a fort with said tree or trees and brush. Uh, we would take money that we would earn doing little things and go out and uh, buy pieces of plywood. Uh, then we'd take those pieces of plywood and make tree houses with those. We, it was just a whole host of things. We'd get on our bicycles and uh, ride eight to 10 miles up to a shopping mall or shopping center and then we'd be riding bikes all over behind the shopping center or mall through the parking lots and stuff. And your freedom's been curtailed. The generation after mine, things started restricting. And stuff was being done in the house. And nobody's been roughhousing. Uh, we'd, be, we'd be wrestling, uh, we'd boxing in the backyard, boxing in the house. Uh wrestling all over the place, out playing uh, tackle football, baseball, uh, basketball. We just did a variety of different things. We'd play kickball, dodgeball, uh, a lot of things. And we were eating cleaner. Uh, there wasn't this go to McDonald's every other day, but if we had McDonald's or uh, some type of fast food or something that of the non-good foods, this is maybe once every month or two. And you, you younger people and the people that are boxing today have gotten these things uh, uh, lifelong. From basically when you get teeth and can chew food, a hamburger's being put in your mouth or pizza or candy and things like that and we also hydrated better so a lot of these things you guys are doing today uh just way past me like 
I'm trying to make weight, but then I need to get my energy up. So I go out here and buy this uh, candy right before the match. There's a whole host of different just ways and things that I'm seeing young kids doing. You're doing you're doing the best for what you got and what you've been dealt and what you've been handed. But my suggestion to you, if you have a younger kid and you want them to be athletic, put good food in their mouth, uh, get them active, let them be playing outside and running around and roughhousing every chance you get, mom and dad, aunt and uncle, grandma and grandpa, and let them kids be kids and just get better food in their mouths. This is what is happening with the uh, strength of boxers and the uh, endurance of boxers. And it's way, way down here as compared to the way it was. And uh, you can actually, if you just go back a good decade to look at would be the 80s, and I'm bringing up the 80s, or the 70s also, but uh, you young kids, go back and look at Marvin Hagler, Roberto Duran, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin, uh, I said Marvin, Tommy Hearns. Uh, look at those. We called those the Fab Four. And when these guys fought each other, it was really on. And it gives you a good logist of guys slinging leather from the opening bell to the end of the 15th round. And we had 15 rounds back then. You guys are having trouble uh, in the amateurs, staying full of steam in three rounds. Uh, you're having trouble if you, uh, when you, when you turn pro, if you have, uh, a six round fight, an eight round fight, and then on with the 10 rounds and uh, 12 rounds. And it shouldn't be that way. And I am convinced that it is because of nutrition. And it's caused a specialization of nutrition today that's just totally not necessary. And more than likely in itself, because the science has never really proven uh, it. it They'll say it's proven from decade to decade. Uh, ten years ago, they say this is the good thing to be eating and doing. Ten years later, it's they say don't be doing eating and doing this. So it's not really science; it's conjecture. And uh, you got to find what fits for you. But as an example with Joe, and Joe burns a lot of calories, I mean by a boatload of calories, and you probably do too as a young boxer, or if you're a trainer, maybe you've got young boxers and they're burning them too. Uh, I'm going to give you just a typical ordinary day for Joe. Um, he get up, uh, yes I do, we do, we have what's called chorizos here which are these wonderful linked sausages. And sometimes he'll have that and eggs and oatmeal in the morning. And he has, has a boatload of it. Uh, sometimes he'll get a half, a half a pound of beef. Yeah, we eat red meat up in here. Uh, and we're going to continue to do so. There are some aspects of not to eat red meat. I'll give you one right now. My mother was a diabetic and having to give herself the shots in the stomach and uh, she quit eating red meat and started eating chicken and rice and some other uh, broccoli and things like that and lo and behold her sugar levels corrected and she no longer ever had to give herself shots again. So Keep in mind what I'm saying. There are exceptions to things uh, for the conditions you may have. Uh, but maybe gets a, a half a pound, even to a pound of, you know, a big full fam round family plate piece of meat this thick and some eggs. Uh, it, uh, it, for lunch, uh, He's getting the big, big chicken breast 
uh, filleted uh, one chicken breast to one and a half or two, just depending upon how hungry he is. He's getting a little bit of rice with that. I believe in peas, pea, green peas. They have a lot of protein. Uh, they help with digestion. Got good fiber in them. And he'll eat, he'll eat generally peas and sometimes mixed peas with carrots. Uh, and we eat broccoli. And uh, for dinner, the same. And when he snacks, he is eating uh, generally... Uh, peanuts and he's eating salted peanuts and I'm just telling you what we do and did you have to keep in mind Joe never has to cut weight uh, his weight class is the uh, it's 174 or 176 plus and he's always in excess of that if he's here in Columbia if he's been a pound to five lower which he has in one tournament, uh, they allowed us to go ahead and bump up to the unlimited class for his age. So he, he was fighting. You can be as heavy as you want. Uh, so we're, we're never having to make weight. But even for fo even you kids that are making weight, uh, I never, I, I fought, when I first started boxing, I was fighting at 125 pounds. And uh, uh, I was a taller, lankier, 125-pounder. And uh, I learned this because I wrestled in high school as well. And it was a tremendous problem making weight during the winter because the winter season of wrestling is in the winter. And when it's colder, you typically you, you gain more weight. Uh, that's natural and that's God given. They, you eat more because you get more fat on you and it keeps you warmer in, in colder environments. So, uh, what they did with us, they'd be like, eat plenty of bananas. Come in here and they'd cut the heat up. Uh, we're, we're, and we didn't go wrestle in the, in the gym area that was big and open. We went in, uh, we had, two little rooms and we'd all be in these little rooms down on mats wrestling or exercising and doing the calisthenics that we did and boy you know you get a lot of people in a room you start sweating and the guy'd be watch what you eat eat salads uh, uh, and eat bananas now bananas are going to replace whatever you're trying to sweat down and bananas are uh, uh with that potassium or, or, and the other nutrients, the natural sugar that bananas have in it, it's going to keep your sugar up. So that's what we did. I mean, things may be saying something different today. Uh, I've, I've seen some things where they say bananas kill testosterone levels, but uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to be a teenager and get your testosterone level uh, beat down if uh, unless you're taking female hormones and you're one of those jackasses that are mentally ill that need desperately need mental health attention but are being told they're normal so unless you're one of those people uh, you, you shouldn't have to fear that and these things are simplify everything the best you can uh, and if you're eating clean, what's going to happen is uh, we eat clean around here. Everything we get is wholesome and that doesn't have preservatives in it. And, uh, the meats, there's no preservatives. But we live in a country where that's cheaper than the stuff that's got the chemicals and preservatives and whatnot in it. And I just want to tell you that if you start eating clean, good food, and you do that for several months, you're going to find if you go over here to McDonald's and eat a Big Mac, it's going to make you sick as a damn dog. If you go over here to Domino's and get a Domino's pizza, it's going to make you sick as a damn dog. And it does all of us. Uh, and that's all these chemicals, all these bad things in this fast food, in this junk food. It's called junk for a reason. 
It's trash. It's trash food. And when you ingest that into a good, clean, healthy body, that's how your body, when you get sick, keep in mind you're really sick all the time. It's just not at the forefront of your brain. You're not nauseated or uh, having loose stool or diarrhea problems and stomach problems and things like that. Uh, you're having those problems all the time. It's just your body's condition to that junk. And you can't expect to to have good strength and a good rapid twitching uh, speedy strength or uh, or endurance when you got your body full of this mess and it takes a long time to get all this out of your system so get it out of your system you're going to see your endurance massively increase you're going to see a lot of things going on I'm going to get a picture of Joe in some shorts without a shirt. If you look at him and you look at Mike Tyson, when Mike Tyson was 14, you're looking at a mirrored image. And Joe's chest is just humongous. And uh, he, just like Mike Tyson at that age, Joe's a little bit bigger uh, than Mike Tyson. But all this stuff has come through hard work and uh, keeping your body clean, see? And so you've, you've got to ingest good things. And some of these things, young boys, that your trainers are telling you to do are not good, uh, such as getting something that's got sugar in it to build you back up. That's a, that, that uh, processed sugar. And uh, if you are... Uh, putting sugar in a, in a drink or something like that, that's okay too, but get natural sugar. Uh, get the uh, unprocessed uh, or minimal processed uh, brown sugar. Uh, I forget what they call it, but that's all we do around here. Uh, I don't even put sugar in my coffee, but when my wife does, and Joe, Joe will have tea and, and Joe will have a morning cup of uh, coffee sometimes too and he'll put just a little bit of that brown sugar in that coffee that's more natural sugar this white sugar and same with breads if you eat bread you need to be eating wheat bread uh, all this uh, you, you are aware that white bread is bleached flour it's actually bleached and uh, in a lot of those processes, uh, and they don't tell you, there's chlorine, you know, and chlorine is what Clorox is made of that is used to bleach this stuff, then they grind it. And uh, you're just getting all sorts of filth in food. So those are a, little, a few little suggestions without me pinpointing and getting so scientific. And young boxer, your trainer's probably going to say, no, 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 all this is wrong. It's probably going to tell you to speed back, don't do that. But uh, you go back and you look at the boxers from yesteryear, from the 80s and before, and, and, and 90s and before, you're going to see a different sport. And you're going to see people go dead on it for 15 rounds. And... Uh, you're going to see guys you like in the 10th round just waning and burning out of gas or 7th, 6th or 7th round burning out of gas. And that's why you see the, 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 what what few exciting knockouts you see, you're just seeing a guy wear down uh, very quickly. You know, these 4th, 5th, 6th round knockouts, it's the guys wearing down real quick. And you don't have to wear down like that. That doesn't have to be you. Look at some of these older methods, kids, and decide what, uh, figure out what works for you. Because this, uh, this sport and your body is not a one-size-fits-all like these trainers and these coaches and uh, from everything from boxing to football are telling you. It's just not. They're so one-dimensional and in tunnel vision and have these horse blinders on. 
and can't see a thing. Uh, and then when they do see greatness, they criticize the greatness that they see because they can't understand it. They're not bad people. They just can't understand, you know, why is this guy doing this? Why is this guy doing this? This guy's awful. This guy's going to get killed. And they have no idea what they're, what they're, uh, what they're doing. It's not that they're bad people. It's just that they've been taught one way, one size. Uh, and I'm sorry, I could, uh, half of you, I could buy a pair of shoes. If, if I buy, uh, Joe's a size 11 right now, I believe, 10 and a half or 11. Let's say I buy a size 10 and a half shoe for everybody. It's not going to fit everybody. So it's just as simple as that. You got to get the correct size shoe to get the correct size performance. You may be able to put the size 10 and a half on. Maybe so tight it's hampering you. Maybe so loose it's hampering you. See, you got to get the size that fits for you. And these trainers need to start. Uh, that's why we got a lot of coaches today. Uh, a trainer, uh, it just is in my humble opinion. I'm not criticizing people that prefer the word coach. Don't, don't think that. I'm just separating these words to mean two different things. And a trainer's going to look at you. They're going to figure out your strength, strengths and your weaknesses, and they're going to do everything they can to build your weaknesses up to make you as strong as you can be there and work on all the strengths that you have to overshadow the weaknesses that you do have. And these guys today, they're not doing that. They're teaching everybody the same way. Everybody that comes out of their gym's got the same style. Everybody. That's why you go over here to gym A, everybody, every single kid in there is fighting the same way. You go to gym D over here and every single kid's fighting the same way. So they have maybe different, uh, some different philosophy, but they're both equally as ignorant, and that ignorance means just don't know. Uh, both of those would be, see, so trainers need to start looking. And uh, young kids, I'd suggest you watch videos. I wouldn't, you know, if, if Guy C over here is your favorite, I would not go over here and pick Guy C and try to make myself just like Guy C. It may be that Guy F over here is the guy you need to be emulating and trying to copy because your fit fits his fit more closely, see. And that's what you should be doing. So uh, you can about, other than building your body up, young guys, you can about get... 20 to 25 percent of your technique and uh, going and better uh, watching all these all this film we have that we didn't have when I was a kid. Back when I was a kid, if it didn't come on the, one of the three television stations that we had, uh, I mean that's all we saw. And you, boy, you watched it quick. And when it when it was over, it was over. You had to go off in the memory. And uh, so it's a, whole, a way diff more difficult world in that aspect for us, but more simple for us because we had older men that were trainers. They did size us up. They did push us further than we could possibly go. Uh, back in my day, I never, I never, ever went into a gym uh, where a gym owners can concern for the money was so great that he wouldn't tell a kid, hey, you need to go on to doing something else. This ain't going to work for you, son. Uh, they'd say that first instead of building up a kid's falsities and uh, making him think he could do something he couldn't do. Uh, newsflash, can everybody box? Can everybody be a running back in the National Football League? Can everybody be a major league baseball pitcher then you got but but many can be all those different things but one can't be all those different things see because you got your strengths and you got your weaknesses 
So you need you need to investigate to learn your strengths and weaknesses and find what's going to fit for you. And you need to fit it like a surgical glove. And once that happens, you you're going to go up like a rocket ship, like Trump says. You're just going to shoot up like a rocket, and it's going to be way better for you. So blessings to everybody, love to everybody. And we hope everybody has a good week the rest of the week. And uh, I'm going to do what I always do. If you get a knock at the door and it's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, I hope to goodness that you open that door to your heart and start learning about the greatest that ever is, ever was, or ever will be, Jesus Christ. So have a good day, everybody.